Welcome to the last episode in the Telecaster builds. Today we're gonna do some fretting and some final assembly and then a little bit of setup. And if we're lucky, we'll do a little play test at the end of all of this. A quick reminder, if you wanna build your own Telecaster and you've enjoyed this series, templates are available on skyscraperguitars.com. I drew these templates from scratch based on my measurements of an actual Fender Telecaster. I went to great pains to make them as accurate as I could possibly get them. The whole reason I did it is because I've used other templates out there that have left a little bit to be desired. So I did everything I could to make these the absolute best templates on the market. Uh, another couple reminders. The radius sanding beams, we were supposed to get these back from Anodize on Friday. They had a high wind storm and it knocked out power for a couple days. They were unable to get our order done by Friday, so it's gonna be ready next week. Unfortunately, with the holidays, we aren't gonna be able to grab those and get those out. Fortunately for everybody who's procrastinated, these are still going to be on sale until I have them in my hands. So they're still 10% off on the website. That is the cheapest they will ever be. We're gonna have them in seven different radii and in three different lengths, five inch, 10 inch, and 20 inch in length. And then all of the common radius, radii, that everybody expects to see. So check out our website if you need those or any other guitar making or setup tools. We also have t-shirts if you wanna support Skyscraper Guitars in terms of swag. These are hand-pulled screen prints made here locally in Castle Rock, Colorado. And then you'll notice in all of the descriptions for all of the episodes in this series, I have a ton of Amazon links for all the supplies and products that I've used to put these projects together. Some of that's tools, some of it's uh, buffing and sanding supplies, all of those things. And it's just to help you guys out as much as I can share what I know about what tools are good and that I like to use here in the shop. We do get a little bit of a commission on that. It doesn't cost you anymore, uh, but Amazon helps us out and it helps our whole channel bringing everybody the information in this series like this. Lastly, our next series is going to be on Stratocaster building, and that will start just after the first of the year. So hopefully you can join us for that if you've enjoyed this Tele build. Now, onto the builds. We're gonna fret our two necks two different ways. This one we're gonna fret with a fret press. This one we're just gonna do the old fashioned way. I've got a brass hammer here that won't hopefully mark the frets, that's the idea of using soft metal here. You can use, uh, they have some hard plastic hammers that work pretty well, but my method is, and I already went through and opened up all the fret slots, ooh baby, with my fret saw. And some people like to fret before they paint. Then if you do that, you have to clean off all of the lacquer or whatever kind of paint you're using from the frets themselves. And that is time consuming and it can be an absolute mess. So I've always preferred to paint first and then go back and fret my neck. So essentially you're just gonna set one side. Oh, I forgot to say, for this guitar we're using just Fender fret wire. So you can buy this in a pack of, it's like 20, four pre-cut frets or 22, I can't remember uh, what they do, but they're already bent. And you just set one side, and I'll do this a handful of times. You set one side, I always use a little bit of wood glue to set them in. And then I go through, oh man, did I hit the fretboard? I did with my hammer, bad Greg. I have the technology to fix it, not a problem. So there's, there's one fret, oh yeah. And then uh, we come in and I've got a pair, these are just from Home Depot, like fence pliers. And I just ground that off so that you get a little bit closer. There's still a little bit to file in there, nothing big, nothing major. Um, so here we go, we'll do fret number two. It needs just a little bit more glue than what I put on there. And the other thing is, since, since this has already been painted, 
the glue won't stick to the actual fretboard. And I'm just looking, this is a wet rag, just water on there. I'm just getting the excess glue off. I'm just making sure the fret's all the way down. And it is, it's in good shape. So I'll continue all the way down the fretboard with these and we'll bring you back. I've got a few radius sanding beams clamped to the neck now to help push those frets in. This will sit like this overnight. Uh, two are mine, <laughs> one is a competitor who makes great tools. Um, I've always said, you know, they make wonderful stuff. I try and make my stuff one notch better and maybe a little bit lower in price. Uh, I was a young guitar builder too at one time and who you can spend a lot of money. But if you had a 20 inch beam, it would do it all in one shot. And since these are prototypes, I don't have one of every single radius for every single size. So that's why I got them matched up like this. I don't normally like to show unobtainium, <laughs> but this is one of those items right now. It's a fret wire bender that we've been working on for a long time. Um, and we just haven't gotten it nailed to the point that I like it, but it's really close. I'm gonna use it to bend our fret wire. Now this is jumbo fret wire right here. You can feed fret wire into these any, either way that you want from the left or the right is what I'm saying. And essentially, you want the tang to be in the groove of the drive wheel. And then I'm gonna move the drive wheel up so that we can actually get that first bend going. Great. And then I'm gonna tighten it down a little bit. And then we're just gonna run it through there till it hits the other end. If you'll notice, we have a bunch of lines on the bender itself that tell you what the radius is. And you always wanna over bend. You don't just wanna leave it right where you need it. So we'll tighten it down again. I don't know my tighten from my loosen. And essentially you always wanna over bend. So if we've got a 12 inch radius on these guitars, we're gonna to wanna to bend it to probably a little tighter than that, at least probably a nine somewhere in there. But we'll have a real good idea We've got our same fence cutting pliers here and I've got a one ton press, just something you can buy at like Harbor Freight or Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. And I made my own fret call here. You can buy sets for these all over the internet. But the first thing I do is cut off the, the end is always flat because you can't get it in the fret bender. So I always cut that off. So everybody does this a little differently. I like to get, my glue around the slot here and then uh, then I'll cut this one to length leaving it just a little bit long we can come back later then I will hammer in one end and give it a good press. Then a little bit of water, clean up the glue squeeze. If you do have any residual glue squeeze, you can always go in with a razor blade and clean it up later, not a problem. Maybe give this one one more, one more squeeze here. Actually, I want to get that off. There we go. Yeah, 
that's good. That's better. Much better. Ah, oh, perfect. So this is our adjustable neck call, and it's got adjustable feet on the bottom. I just took the feet out for when I do fret pressing. So we'll just do another couple here on camera, nice and easy, and you can follow along. I took a little time to install the tuning pegs and I've got the front sort of buttoned up and then I usually just use a straight edge across these and kind of twist them and tighten them until I like them. Then I take a marking scribe and just kind of put a little dimple in the center of each of the screws. I don't know if you all can see that. I'm going to drill a tiny, tiny, tiny hole in there and then tighten up the screws. If there is any pressure, like they don't want to go, you stop, back them out and drill a little bit deeper. The last thing you want to do is break one of these screws off because they are very, 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 very difficult to extract. They're just so small. You can use a little bar of soap or wax or anything if you want on the threads. I don't find it necessary all the time. It probably depends on the type of wood and that all comes down to how hard was it to work with the whole time you're building the guitar. You can channel your experience carving the guitar and doing all the other stuff to let you know how hard the maple is or the mahogany. Um, a lot of times I don't find it necessary to do stuff like that unless I'm working in a very, very hard wood. We need to file down the ends of these frets and we're going to leave them just a little bit proud. I'm just getting off the bulk. We will finish off the filing with a much smaller file. I just don't want to ruin the lacquer on there. Now, some people measure this side angle that I'm doing right now to bevel the end of the fret. And I, I have before. I shouldn't say that. I started out doing it that way. And then I realized I just really like to do it by feel. I don't like very much angle on there at all. I feel it takes away from the playing surface. And so I just put a very, very slight angle on there. Some people, some people do a lot more than I do, that's for sure. And again, I'm staying just a little proud right now. I've seen Tim Sway from New Perspectives Music uses a belt sander and 
it's on its side and he just kind of rolls these fret ends and it works really slick. I don't have, uh, <laughs> I don't have that confidence. <laughs> so I just take a few swipes with a file. No big deal, it doesn't take long. So let's address this nut slot. We cut a couple slots in there a while back when we slotted the fretboard. Now I'm just gonna tap those out lightly with a chisel. We don't wanna break anything. We just wanna be very careful at this point because the guitar is almost done. And this is why a lot of people will paint their guitars after they're fretted and after the nuts are put in and that sort of thing. It's just not how I do it. So everybody's a little bit different and that's okay. Without watching too much boring stuff, this file is the exact same width as this nut, maybe just a hair smaller. And I use it to, and you can see how tight that is. I use it to just file the bottom of that nut slot nice and level. So I'm gonna spend some quality time <laughs> with this nut slot here and get it just perfect and then we'll fit the nut. And through the magic of television here, we have the nut fit. This slot might be a little low for this nut. This is a direct replacement fender. I may have cut it a little bit low, but that's okay. I've got some nut blanks that I will use and file them the way I want them. So the next step, you can see we've got the neck set in here and we're gonna align everything. So I wanna get my four screws for the bridge started. Probably just do these outside two then we're gonna drill for the string through. Then we're gonna put some thread on the tuners and make sure the neck is lined up in the neck pocket. Then we'll screw the neck on. For the strings, we're only drilling halfway. For the through strings, we've got a 532nd that fits in our fender body, so that's what we're going to drill those with. I know everybody thought we were done with the templates, but I'm tapping through all the holes for the string ferrules, and we're going to drill them from the back side here. And I actually just had my template off a little bit, so I need to make sure I drill the correct holes. I think our ferrules are large enough to cover that up, so not a big deal. Traditionally on a Telecaster, you have these string ferrules, and we can look at the Fender guitar, and you can see that they're proud. They stand proud. They're not recessed in. So we can either recess them in or we can stand them proud. If you're gonna recess them in, you wanna use your brad point bits and drill the larger diameter hole because that brad point bit has that center bit that goes down. So if you drill the hole that fits this ferrule, uh, the small end, you, you won't be able to line up <laughs> the countersink there. I just used a 2564 to drill the counter bore for these. My drill press, there just wasn't quite enough distance uh, on my drill press. It's a little mini drill press. So um, we're gonna go ahead and drill these. Uh, this is this is a 5 16 bit to drill for the narrower part of the ferrule. So we'll drill these down. Then last but not least, 5.30 seconds is, should meet our, our hole on the other side. So we're just gonna drill carefully. Now the key is you just stick the ferrule in the hole and get a block of wood and then drive it home.
If you need a really direct hit on anything, a quarter 20 bolt will work. And that can just sort of finish them that one hair below the surface. I've got this nice and snug. We're just transferring the holes through. And we can open them up a little bit more on the next side. 764 inch. Stopping just short. This is a little trick I learned from Randy Schardiger, and that's the house that never sleeps for those of you who aren't subscribed to his channel, love watching Randy. But he runs a couple pieces of thread from the tuners there to the bridge and you just tape it off on the bridge and look to see how even you are all the way down the edge of the neck. And I would say we are just bang on. So I'm gonna tighten down the screws that hold the neck plate. Getting the electronics and all of that ready to go. So I've got this pickup mounted here and the wires strung through the hole that we drilled a couple episodes ago. And uh, it all fits very tight, very nice. We're gonna put the screws in here to hold the bridge in place. I'm happy with all of that. And then we'll mount the pickup here. So I've got the components mounted back behind here. We haven't soldered anything. Got all my wires in. Pickup is mounted here. It just mounts directly in. And then our pick guard goes over that. So one of the more important things on a Telecaster is just making sure that the switch cavity cover and the pick guard and the gap around the bridge are nice and even. And it looks like we've got those right where we want them. So again, I'm going to take my scribe and just make a little divot right in the middle of each of these holes and then we'll drill some screw holes and we'll be able to put the pick guard and the cavity cover or the switch plate right back where they need to go anytime. One of the last steps we're gonna do before we go solder everything together is gonna be to put our strap buttons on I got two felts, one for each button. We'll go ahead and fix that back here. Nice. We'll get the front horn one on as well. I wired up all of the connections based on the Seymour Duncan wiring diagram, which incorporates just a uh, 47 microfarad cap here. And Stumac in their Telecaster set included two different capacitors. And thankfully I've got a nice fluke that can test capacitance because I couldn't tell from the markings what, what they were, but Essentially, you go through and you loop together the sides of the three-way switch. So these, these black lines, you loop together and then you put the white and the white from your pickups and then the grounds from your pickups all go on the back of the volume pot. That ground ties together with the ground on the back of the tone pot, which ties into the ground here and it can tie into the ground from the bridge but the way these pickups are made, they're grounded when you screw them to the telly bridge. So didn't have to worry about that. 
I'm trying to just work these wires down in there nice and neat. Um, if you get solder on the face of a guitar, it will leave a permanent mark. <laughs> and you don't want that. So let's see, I think this is my weapon of choice for these two screws here. So for the wiring on this, I decided to go the easy route instead of wiring it all myself and get an Emerson pre-wired kit. I really just wanted to see what these were all about. Man, it sure does look like a nice kit already and wired up for the tele capacitor here. So essentially all we got to do is run our output jack through and then uh, attach our pickups to the three-way selector. So it doesn't get it much easier than this, but I'm pretty excited about it. We are hooking up humbuckers in this guitar. So this is called like the 59 stack or something like that. And uh, it'll be an interesting, interesting sound when we get done with it. Well, there she is in all of her glory. I've got Lucky Dog knobs on it. I couldn't get a chrome for this, so it's kind of a blackened piece, but I'll probably wind up with a chrome somewhere later in life. But these are pretty heavily textured knobs. I'll get a close-up of them. I'm excited to get this one strung up, ready to go. I've got a tusk nut kind of sitting in there. And these direct fender replacements are really nice if you have a fender guitar that's made in a factory and comes off the line. Um, but I prefer, this is just a bone blank. I prefer to mark these out, kind of start from there. So I've got to thickness it down just a little bit. I took my calipers and kind of made a line around it. And I'll show you how I've done every nut that I've ever worked on. The good news is bone is fairly soft. <laughs> so it doesn't take a whole lot of time to sand it down. This is 180 grit. I've just got sticky back paper attached to my table saw because it's very, very flat surface. And like I said, I've marked a line around the edge with my calipers and I've got it right now at uh, 0.1 four, five. It needs to be a little bit smaller than that, but that's where we're going to start. I don't want to over trim the nut, you know, you want to start out <laughs> and work your way to the line. There we go, nice snug fit, not too tight, not too loose. That's gonna be beautiful. I used the straight edge here across the frets and just made a couple little marks to show where the fret would be if there was a fret here. And then just kind of lean in my pencil, just kind of lean in my pencil along the frets just kind of just made a mark a little bit above that to give me plenty of room. So we'll cut down close to this and then we'll start filing nut slots in and then we'll shape this to the final shape. It's I'm never in a hurry when I'm doing this.
I think we are ready for some string slots. The first thing that we need to do before our fret level is to make sure that the fretboard is as level as it can be. So we're using our notch straight edge and then the truss rod to adjust it. And I adjusted that before I put this together. I'm double checking and this is completely flat. The next thing we're gonna do is blue all the tops of the frets so that we can see our progress and tell what's low and what's high. From here out, we're just gonna do a standard fret level and dress, and I'm gonna put a link to another video that I've done that goes through that process in fairly gory detail so we can speed through this one. I did wanna point out the Skyscraper Guitar's neck call. This is different than the other neck calls on the market. It has adjustable feet that you can raise and lower so if you're working on a guitar that's still on the body, you can level this neck call so that the entire neck is being held properly. Otherwise, on a Fender style guitar, you have to pop the neck off in order to level the frets. And some people just lay them on the bench. Other people lay them on a call. It just, I don't know. This, this is my favorite way of doing it. That was literally about 45 seconds to get all the high spots knocked down. We're good on all the frets. We will switch over to our fret crowning file. This is a Hosco version and it's the one that I prefer. Putting a little fall off into the end of the fretboard here. So I can already see this one's ground down, that one's ground down, that one's ground down, this one's just getting touched. So we'll just keep going until they're all just skimmed. I'm starting at the 15th fret. That's a good place to start your fall off. Got two more frets here to get touched. Now we're starting to touch on the 15th. A little bit more. That's gonna be perfect. We'll mark them and crown them. This is my favorite file for rounding fret ends. I will leave a link in the description. It is the Fret Guru. It works really well for what I'm doing because it has a ground side and then that's the file face. And it's just as wide as a fret so you can take off tangs without getting into the edge of the fingerboard or the neck. And it's just the right grit we're just giving these a little bit of a soft round over. I love it.
I've got a surrogate nut in here. This is just a tusk nut that's pre-slotted for fender. And the tusk nuts are usually fit pretty well. The slot that I cut was a little bit sloppy uh, for that. And you can cut them right on, get them an eighth inch, and, and you'll be perfect. We've got about 5 30 seconds from the treble E, and we've got about 5 30 seconds from the base E from the outside. So that's where we're going to mark for the new nut to start. The next thing I want to show you is this, and it's a file that I've got on our Skyscraper website. You can download it for free. I'll leave a link down below. And it's just a string spacing rule. Um, essentially, these marks move in by about three thousandths of an inch every increment that you go down. So it's a pretty simple thing to put together graphically. And I just thought it might be of use to folks. I printed a bunch out on cardstock and then cut them out. So for <laughs> until the 20 or so that I printed are gone, you can get them on my website for free. If you're ordering something, just put the, uh, the free string spacing ruler in your cart and it's just going to be cardstock. It's nothing super fancy, but it's free. And, you, and if you're ordering something, you can just throw it in. And if you're not ordering something, that's fine. You can hop on and get the free download. Not a problem at all. And then you'll have a string spacing rule. So the way this works is you pick out six marks. So one, two, three, four, five. That doesn't work. We need to get much tighter. So let's go this way. That looks like it might be a winner. One, two, three, four, five, six. That is it. So we will sit and mark these. Well, we cut off somewhere in the middle of getting these filed, but just kind of went back through and made sure with our string spacing rule, let's get on the right one here, that all the strings, the initial slots were cut in the right spot and they are now. So that's wonderful. So the next thing we need to do is take these all down to where they need to sit and live. And um, we can always run a straight edge. There we go. We can always run a straight edge over and that's going to give us a pretty good idea. They're going to sit just above the straight edge. The workbench is a mess. <laughs> you can tell this has been a long build and I really want to get this done tonight so we cut it a little short but we're putting a little boiled linseed oil on here. We've gone through pretty much the full setup, truss rod adjustment, tuning back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. It's a long process. Now we're just putting some boiled linseed oil on this fretboard for the first time and it is really drinking it up so we're gonna have to put a lot of it on there but we don't let it sit too long we just kind of put it on we take it off and uh, just make sure the fretboard's got a good coat on it been a long time coming here it's been fun to build this guitar i'm hoping you guys had fun following along if you want to build your own Telecaster, we still have template sets available. Uh, we are still shipping. We'll ship right through Christmas, right through the new year and everything else. We also have plenty of tools if you're into working on guitars. If you're not and you just had fun following along, thanks for following along and all the nice comments along the way.
There we go. Just a little sound test. I'm not the world's greatest guitar player. I wish I were. And when the camera goes on, I get even worse. So anyway, uh, I do have a little, little bit left to do on the guitar. The string tree here, there's, it's not putting enough pressure where I want it on the string. So I'm getting the E and the B just aren't sounding out right. I think they're also muting out on the back of the bridge. So I'm going to drop the bridge a little bit, pull the saddle up, and hopefully that'll give it a little bit more voice. And it's just, you know, tuning in final details of the guitar. We are still going to play the yellow guitar. It's back here. I just haven't had time to finish it this week, uh, but we will get it wrapped up. And when we do, I'll share everything that I've done on this guitar to improve it as well. I hope everybody out there has a safe holiday, a Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy Hanukkah for those who celebrate Hanukkah and any other holiday you might celebrate. I hope you have a great time uh, with your friends and family. That's what's most important. So we are going to start some other builds after the first of the year. I hope you'll join me for those. And uh, I think I've got some good videos on just guitar setups that I'm going to share. We'll see you later, guys. Take care. <laughs>